Hello. Welcome to Aging Well in America. I'm Anne Marie Guitari, your host. Every day, 6,000 people turn 65 in the United States. There are 5.5 million people over the age of 85 today. In the year 2050, that number will grow to 20 million. There will be 20 million people over the age of 85. Are we ready? Is, the, is America ready? There's so much good work going on in the, in the country and around the world, and in fact, right here in our own community, to prepare for that time. And with us today, we have, um, we have a, a guest who is doing some of that good work. Dr. Bondi is an acupuncturist at St. John Hospital, and with us is one of her patients. Welcome so much, Dr. Bondi and Justine. Thank you, Thank Emily. You. Thank you for coming. So we were talking earlier about acupuncture as pain management, and in some cases, even as an alternative to surgery, which is Justine's situation. So we're real um, eager to hear, to hear Justine's story. But before we do, we talked, uh, we said we might just do a very, very quick little lesson on acupuncture and what it is. Absolutely. An overview. So acupuncture, Anne-Marie, is basically... Um, shall, I, um, shall I open your chart? Uh, sure. Okay. So I'm going to hold up this chart, which shows um, all the parts of the body. I'll stand up, and then uh, Dr. Bondi can uh, point to the, the body parts as, as needed. So what I wanted to say was that acupuncture is basically an ancient Chinese healing art. And the idea is that we have energy, or qi, that is flowing through our bodies. And the reason I brought this poster, Anne-Marie, is because it shows that we have these energy channels that start at the bottom of our feet, travel all the way up our bodies, and then back down the backside of our bodies to the earth again. And if you look at the left side of the poster here, this is showing a picture of the front of the body. These black lines are lines that show the acupuncture channels. And I'm not sure if you can appreciate the individual red um, they're actually black dots with red numbers next to them. Those are actual individual acupuncture points. And so you can see in the picture in the middle here, on the side view, the acupuncture channel and the way that it travels. And then finally, the picture on the right, you see the acupuncture travel as it travels down the back side of the body. Okay, so these energy lines then, they're moving, whether we're using acupuncture or, or not. Absolutely. They're moving. So what happens as they, uh, they move when there is no acupuncture being well, administered? Whenever we have an injury or an illness, there can be blockages that occur somewhere along those energy channels. Okay. And so the idea of acupuncture is to place needles in very specific locations, um, depending on what the patient's complaint is, to help unblock that stagnant energy, if you will. And once that energy is unblocked, then the energy can start flowing through those channels again harmoniously. Okay. And the patient's body can basically begin to heal itself. And what is it about the needle that unblocks that point? Well, acupuncture points are points that are easily accessible under the skin. So although we have the entire energy channel on our bodies, the acupuncture points themselves are areas where um, there's less electrical resistance, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. and they're also located closer to the surface of the skin. So they're more easily accessible to the acupuncture needle. By inserting an acupuncture needle into an acupuncture point, it actually helps to increase the blood flow to that area it helps to remove any stagnation in that area, and it helps to create a sense of balance in the individual in whichever direction the patient needs to go towards to become balanced. Okay. So I'm thinking that a lot of people may be um, wondering, well, um, we hear that yoga does this with the energy. We hear um, about massage therapy. We hear even about physical therapy um, and energy. And do these um, other types of healing arts, if you will, do the same thing? And is one more effective than the other? Must they be used in unison? Can you? So what, what's the relationship, I guess, between um, among acupuncture and some of these other? Well, I think that you're approaches. right, Emory. They do all deal with energy. Um, one is not mutually exclusive of the other. 
I think that um, just like, um, and we'll talk with Justine a little, in a little bit here, but there's no one modality that I think mm -hmm. is the end-all, mm -hmm. cure-all for any one given individual. And although acupuncture treatments can be very effective for pain management and for other conditions, which we can discuss in a little bit, mm -hmm. um, I think it's very important for patients uh, in general to continue doing those things outside of the office that help to maintain their wellness, whether that be yoga, proper nutrition, exercise, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all part of it. Mm -hmm. You can't be doing one thing in the office and then go home and do things that are going to completely defeat the purpose of the acupuncture treatment and undo what's been done. Okay, very good. So you, you, are, um, you are a medical doctor as well, Dr. Bondi? I am. And um, so when Justine came to you with her medical condition, you, I'm uh, assuming you looked at her from both points of view, from Absolutely. being an acupuncturist as well as, as a physician. So <clears throat> Justine, tell us about uh, what happened to you and how you got to Dr. Bondi, and then I'd really love to hear how you, as we talked earlier, how did you see Justine and, uh, and the solution? Well, <clears throat> I fell and uh, dislocated my right shoulder and uh, had a massive tear of the rotator cuff. Okay. And um, in waiting for uh, an appointment for physical therapy, I started uh, at the Healing Arts Center at St. John with massage uh, to be proactive into it. Actually, that's the second thing I did. The first thing I did was to pray to Father Solanus to guide me <laughs> in order to help myself. And you were guided. And I was guided there, I'm sure. Uh, and while I was there, one of the people that did the uh, uh, massage therapy uh, suggested acupuncture, which I hadn't thought of on my mm -hmm. own. So there again, <laughs> the providence of the but Lord. But before you even got to the therapy, the massage therapy, your doctor had recommended a surgery. Surgery. Yes, a surgery. And uh, I asked if I could have therapy first, and I did end up having two sessions uh, of therapy. Physical therapy. Physical therapy, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he said I would definitely need the surgery. When I <clears throat> went to the physical therapist, I asked the therapist, will there be improvement enough so I don't need surgery? He said, no, you're going to need surgery. <laughs> Why did you want to avoid surgery? Well, uh, for several, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, definitely I did not want the surgery if I could avoid it. Secondly, um, for job security, being older uh, and still working, I wanted to make sure I could continue that. And this allowed me to do it. I was lucky enough to have scheduled vacation <laughs> that was already scheduled when I, when I uh, had the injury. Okay. So I was safe there in order to give myself time to okay. recoup a little bit. But the acupuncture, I'm sure, as for me, as part of the whole picture, really helped. Uh, and I'm very grateful to Dr. Bondi for that. That's so true. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful success story. So when Justine came to you, Dr. Bondi, what, um, what did you see? What was her condition? And well, um, Justine had um, quite a bit of pain and considerable uh, limited range of motion with her right shoulder when she came to me. Can you demonstrate what were you able, how uh, uh, much were you able when to? When I was at the doctor's office, I could, I, I was uh, in labor trying to just get it out a little bit and he told me to quit. He says, don't hurt yourself anymore. And by the time I had my first appointment, with you, I think I could do it a little bit more, but not much. I think that her range of motion with regards to moving her arm away from her body was probably no more than 10, 15 degrees. And I would say as far as flexion of the arm, same thing, probably 10, 15 degrees there as well. And what she was doing was she was recuperating, um, recruiting rather, uh, muscles, other muscles of the shoulder and upper back area to help her move that arm up. So she would oh kind my. of try to move it up like this, uh -huh. not realizing that, you know, she thought her range of motion was improving when in fact she was actually recruiting other muscles to, to do that same purpose that normally the supraspinatus muscle would be helping her to do. But I could still, I could still move my lower arm, my forearm, okay. yes. but it was my shoulder. And when was. you moved, was it just incredible pain? Is that what you were feeling? Uh, uh, yes, and I just couldn't move it any further. I just mean, it was stopped. just, yeah, it okay. was impossible. I could put my arm up, 
and then move my forearm. But I, I could not do it on my own. Okay. Okay. And, and sometimes and you would use your other arm to help you as well. And as today, yeah. Mm -hmm. what can you do today? Show us what your arms do today. <laughs> well, I can do, I can do it all. <laughs> <laughs> Just as the, before you fell. Yep. Absolutely. And that's without surgery. And without surgery. And this is how long has the treatment been going on? Uh, the treat. Well, she started. Her injury was on November seventh of two thousand ten. She came to me uh, at the end of that same month, November 30th, and I would say about a year, year and a half into it, um, she was able to accomplish this type of range of motion and no pain. But Anne-Marie, I do want to point out that Justine has been very diligent, not just about coming to see me regularly, but she's doing, doing her physical therapy regularly, her massage regularly, and I think all of those things, and her prayer, of course, <laughs> those are all things that I think have contributed yes. to her recovery. And the other thing that's very important for people to know is that um, although acupuncture can be very good with pain uh, resolution, with um, healing after post-operative conditions, um, both just with the healing and with the post-operative mm -hmm. pain, um, you know, sometimes Western medical interventions are absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's important to find the place where the East and the West can meet, so to speak, mm -hmm. so that you have the best possible outcome for a given patient. And so I have patients sometimes that come to me before they've even seen their medical doctor for certain ailments. I'll mention low back pain because it's such a common thing that we see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I always tell patients, um, especially if they have other health problems or if they are older, that it's very important to get a thorough medical evaluation first and mm -hmm. make sure that there aren't other more life-threatening potential reversible causes of the pain that need to be dealt from the Western medical model before just addressing their pain. Um, you know, you know, it's kind of like um, uh, taking Motrin for abdominal pain that ends up being an ulcer. You actually end up making sure. the condition much worse. Sure. So um, it's very important okay. to have that medical evaluation. So um, in, in your practice then, ap um, applying acupuncture would be after you know what the medical condition is, which Absolutely. is what the case was with Justine. I think I always find myself looking at the patient from the Western medical model first. First. I think you have to. Okay. Um, you have to know exactly what you're dealing okay. with and what it is that you're treating. That's interesting. You know, we're, you're not treating a symptom. I mean, that may be what the patient's coming in for, mm -hmm. but the whole idea is to look at the patient mm -hmm. from a holistic perspective mm -hmm. and figure out what the cause of those symptoms mm -hmm. are, again, okay. for the best outcome. So going back to Justine's um, situation, you were explaining earlier before we started what um, what you found once you looked at her MRI and it had to determine whether or not acupuncture would even be appropriate. Yes. So as I mentioned, Justine brought her MRI report in with her and what she had was a complete tear of the front or the anterior part of her supraspinatus um, tendon. Uh, and uh, she actually had some, in a few intact fibers is how the report read of the posterior or the back part of the muscle. And initially, I wasn't sure how much it was going to um, help her, just because I knew there were just a few t uh, shreds of, of mm -hmm. muscle there that were mm -hmm. holding the muscle together mm -hmm. at this point. And, and that's I did what tell you her needed to be able to do the act to work with her. If she had had a complete tear, both mm -hmm. the front and the back, mm -hmm. I probably would have encouraged her strongly to take the advice of her orthopedist and consider the surgery. Um, like I mentioned, um, acupuncture is not going to grow back. Uh, new muscle cells or new sure. tendons, uh, but it can help if there's something already there to work with. Okay. We, um, we talked in general, too, about uh, pain management. So many um, elderly people have, uh, are living with pain day to day. They've just accepted it as their, their way of life. How can uh, acupuncture um, help relieve some of that pain for them? Um, I think it can be very effective for pain. Um, I find that people get especially good relief with um, uh, chronic low back pain mm -hmm. or even pain from arthritis. But I do tell my patients that with acupuncture, if there is a chronic condition that they're dealing with, it will probably take longer, more sessions. It may even take more frequent sessions in the beginning mm -hmm. before they begin to notice an improvement. Uh, as opposed to if you came in after an acute injury, you may notice that you may need much fewer treatments or a shorter duration of time for the treatments before you notice an effect. So I do tell people that you do need to be patient with the treatments if it's something mm -hmm. that's been ongoing for some time. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people, I think, are very surprised by the results 
results that they have, mm -hmm. even after um, maybe one or two treatments, because I've prepared them that it may take several treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are people who, re who respond very quickly to it. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about acupuncture is, is you don't even have to believe in it for it to work. It's going to do whatever it's going to do. <laughs> um, but I think that it can be very effective um, in conjunction with other therapeutic modalities as well. You know, a lot of times patients ask me, well, I see a chiropractor as well. Uh, is it okay if I come get acupuncture as well? Or, you know, is it okay if I do massage with this? And I say, absolutely. I think acupuncture is very complementary and can enhance the effects of the other therapeutic modalities. I have found that people will oftentimes go for a massage and they'll feel better temporarily, but then those same areas of tension will come back. Well, what acupuncture can do is help the therapeutic effects of the massage to last longer. Uh, so hopefully you don't have to oh, go as frequently, perhaps. And the mm -hmm. same thing with chiropractic adjustments. Mm -hmm. It can help the adjustment to last longer. And I think the reason for that is because you're getting to the root cause. You're not just treating a specific symptom. I see. And what does it feel like when the needle is going in you? Well, <laughs> um, I, who used to faint at any needle coming at me, uh, I, and doctor says it's hard to believe, but um, sometimes you feel a little something, sometimes you don't. Um, it's, you know, I just, you just relax mm -hmm, and... Mm -hmm. uh, Are you lying down? Mm -hmm. Yes, Usually. I am for, for um, mine. Okay. Yeah. And front and back or is it all? Both. Off? Depends what the patient needs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are points, as I showed you on the poster, there's points all over the body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so um, oftentimes I will use points on both sides of the body. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, I would say the majority of patients that I'm treating are lying down, mm -hmm. especially for their very first treatment because mm -hmm. some people do get what we call needle shock where mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. get a little lightheaded or faint-ish, uh, mm -hmm. although, like I said, just yeah, has never <laughs> been in that category. <laughs> um, but... Um, Lying down or oh, sitting? Yes. So or usually they're lying down, although there are some patients who do have a difficult time being in certain positions because uh, of a stroke, for example, sure, or sure. whatever, the, because of their pain issue. So I will work with patients, and sometimes I will actually treat them if just sitting in a chair mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. laying on their side, yeah. if that's what's most comfortable for them. Yeah. So I try to work with them. Yeah, I'm thinking that it may be difficult for, for some um, elderly folks to get up on a table, mm -hmm. um, or is, is do you have a hospital bed? in your office or no, we're, um, so in the Healing Arts Center at um, the Van Elsander Cancer Center, we actually have uh, massage therapist tables there. And okay. um, you can adjust the height of the table, okay. so that so makes it easier. And then we also have stools that the patient can then use okay. to step onto. Okay. You brought some needles? Show I us, did. because I think I, we think of I acupuncture did. needles as being so You know, and right, they do come in different lengths okay. and different Let's sizes, depending on what part of the body you're using the needles All on. Right. Um, but I brought this particular one to show you because this is this is usually how they come. They come in blister packs like this mm -hmm. that are Just individually like wrapped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are not hollow bore needles like the kind that um, you draw blood with. So they're solid stainless steel needles. They are sterile. They are disposable. And as you can see here, they are individually packed. So there's five needles here individually packed. So if I just wanted to use one needle for a particular treatment, I could just rip one off like that. And I could actually open one to show you if you'd like. Okay, sure. If you want to use me, you can. That's okay, <laughs> Justine. Um, so it comes in a guide tube like this. Some acupuncturists will actually use the guide tube. You'll have it, you know, rest the guide tube on the patient's skin and just tap the needle into place. A lot of times I will actually just take the needle out of the guide tube. I don't know if you can zoom in on that and see how fine that particular needle is. This one is uh, 25 millime uh, 0.25 excuse me, millimeters in diameter, okay, and it's 40 millimeters in length. And this Maybe is the average size needle. Maybe if you hold your needle. hand up behind it, we can see. Uh, Does that see it? show no, up a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there. You've yeah. You can see it there, yeah. And so most commonly, I'll actually just use my finger. Instead of using the guide tube, I'll just use my finger and hold it on the skin and just kind of gently push the needle in that How way. How far does it go in? Again, it depends on what part of the body you're okay. going into. So if somebody's coming in with hip pain, the needle's going to go in deeper in, in an area like that. Okay. If I'm going in the wrist, obviously much less flesh here, more bone here, so it would okay. be more superficial. It's, um, the idea of the needle is to get to the acupuncture point itself. And the way you know that is 
by, you can feel the difference in the resistance of the, resistance of the tissues as you're inserting the needle. And the patient oftentimes will feel uh, an achy sensation. They might feel some warmth. They might feel a numbing sensation. Uh, and it might be just at that site. It might be in a circular pattern around the acupuncture point, or it may even travel up and down that energy channel. How, how um, that's did being it treated. feel to you, Justine, and did it change? Did the sensation change with time? Uh, I just usually, uh, for some reason, I can accept the needles without any problem. Like I said, oh, <laughs> one who used to faint all the time, and I was so worried about that first session. But um, sometimes, um, like Dr. said, I, I have felt uh, a little... Uh, point pressure or traveling up but or down. But did you feel the, um, the, like you the described, feeling? almost like a, the energy moving up and down or a warmth or? Uh, I can't say that I have felt it. Usually, I, if I'm not talking, I put myself in another place okay. uh, where um, I'm praying, okay. uh, mm -hmm. meditating, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, if I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> So you can do it very casually. Yes. There's not, uh, the room doesn't need to be dark with candles and no, incense. No, no. no. Although she does have very pleasant music playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, that, and I do like that, yeah. the music. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Do you have many elderly patients who come to you for acupuncture? Or is this something I would say feel? yes. Um, it seems to me that probably the, well, the majority of my patients are probably over 50, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, maybe that's because they do have ailments. Maybe they're more aware. Maybe they have more time to come to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, since being in the cancer center, um, we're in a very visible location. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we also have a senior care link program through the hospital. Mm -hmm.